gay rape is not a, not okay. And let me tell let me let you understand that if anyone if anyone is to say anything about gay rape or anything like that, I will basically um, shut them down and basically delete them on that platform that I'm at. You say that gay rape is oh it's okay and that maybe we'll get away with it and all we have to do is just have minor consequences. Well, in heaven you'll have a lot of consequences. You'll have a lot of people going against you and if you don't get salvation then well basically you'll have embarrassing past to know about and then you'll be forever burned in the lake of fire by basically it's not like you'll no longer exist I know what will happen to you but I know that bad things will happen to you it'll be much worse than just what you do to that person so don't tell me that if you tell if you, if you do something horrible to that person if you don't really repent of that I mean by not believing but also just by not being sorry for what you've done not just I mean no guys if you're really gay and feeling like it if you don't turn to the Lord and really mean that not, not just really mean that you want to accept Jesus as, as your Lord and Savior I mean the reward will be taken away from you if you don't really mean that you're sorry for what you've done to that person. Also, in that point, if you really are raping a person in real life, there's going to be major consequences, earthly or not. And let me tell you, let me tell you something about this. I experienced uh, a man basically being lived with another man. They were both disabled. They were in adult school and one of them was rubbing him uh, another one on the back. That was male. And that that um, the, the next the, the male next to him uh, the, the other male was touching him in places on his back, wherever it was. He was just poking and he got really upset. Another man got really upset. He got he got so upset that he started cursing and wanting to have nothing to do with him. He got so angry that he wanted to hurt him. Even though the other guy was just cursing that he wanted... To, he just would rather that... He was just cursing at him and basically um, screaming and said, I don't care. I want to do whatever I want. That's gay rape for you. That's that's the gay agenda, to do whatever you want with what they want to do. And if you're wondering, my place that I used to go at used to be much calmer, but now it has to be done with the gay agenda, and with all the um, oh, what do I call it? Like, like all the I have a lot to say, but you know. Lots of what's going on is that the liberal, the the major left, the, the the far left, are just trying to ruin it in places like where I work. So it got so toxic there that it's like the liberals are so toxic. It's just not even funny. Not to mention, I am just saying I've had, I've had enough of that place. There's another guy um, that works with me, and. I'm not going to name his name because he's he, re, he wants to re, remain anonymous. But he, I mean, he's had enough with this, but I've had enough even more than he has. I don't even recognize what he's feeling or what he knows. I just feel it more than he feels it. I recognize it that way much more than he feel, feel, knows it. And he, he actually recognizes all the kinds of other things. But I'm not going to mention his name. Nor am I going to mention anyone else in that matter. It's it's just... The whole situation is very messy and ugly and very, very, um, dirty. It's also filled with wet feelings. It's, it's not right. The whole thing that's stressing me out right now is that I experienced... I mean, you say, you hear in the news, well, um, this person was accepted 
other ways in the school without problem except for moving to another school because, well, I would say he raped a, he raped a girl because he wanted to be, you know, trans and all that. And then the other parent, the, the other parent that was victim was actually victimized even more by going to jail because he was considered a homegrown terrorist. Because he was just like very upset and uptight that these people would rape their, you know, daughters and sons. And very demeaning what's going on is <laughs> this has happened before. Nothing is new in the sun. Like before this was not acceptable. However, the fact that it wasn't acceptable doesn't mean they, they, they don't even realize it happened. So before rape with a 19-year-old uh, person, I'm not going to mention names, with another child, and another child in front of him, that person ended up, you know, getting scarred for his life forever, for whatever person just ended up hearing about Oh, if the person talks about certain aspects of what's so evil about you know, child molestation, if they hear about it, they just get very upset, and then they, they get really so upset that they end up, whenever they hear about it, they just wish that everyone was dead that did something to him. Another child that happened to be more direct was so, so scarred that he wished he never had children, he was alone. And he's very dark, and he talks about all the kinds of horrible things. YouTube is the same thing, really. YouTube is so dark and so evil that people are becoming dark. And yet, I, I don't have no control over this. This guy agenda is hurting people. Not only that, YouTube's agenda, YouTube, YouTube's agenda is hurting people. And the more we see about what's going on on YouTube, and the more we see about what's happening the more we do it. Like the person that I talked about, he ended up um, quite literally doing some inappropriate things with online and he got rid they got, got they got rid of his computer. I'm not gonna name names of course, but you know <sighs> this is very upsetting. I just say, I had to say out loud to everyone that doesn't know about what's going on. To just to let you know what's going on is, you know, people are being raped and the other person is getting into trouble because, well, oh, the person is raped and uh, it's not acceptable to do horrible things. And I know this is not for children. However, if there ever was a child, or if there ever is a child that is a victim, just know that, you know, they can still, you know, have therapy. They can do things that will help them, but they're not, they're not going to get that much better. The fact that I heard about rape was so horrible. And that, I mean, the demons, I think it's, they had a whole heck of a party because people are just, you know, doing whatever they want because the law is on their side. And demons saying, okay, let's make them, let's make even more people unhappy by giving them dreams of, you know, you know, about a person being raped, even if it was male or female, they'll give them more dreams about rape. And it included me, and it possibly includes you, and it includes everyone that um, is under high attack of demons, either not high, under high attack of demons or not saved. And a third one is, a third possibility is, you know, they just, um, they're just unlucky. They just, you know, they have to be taught 
that, you know, rape is one of those things that they have to deal with in their mindset. Because, well, even if you haven't been raped, it's going to happen to everyone no matter what. Not that it's going to happen to everyone, but these demons, it's in the demon's mind, they say, oh, how about we rape everyone in our mind so that it's like, you know, guys, this is not okay. None of this is okay. No one's going to truly recover after seeing horrible things like that. What makes it even worse is it's, um, it may be a popular trend to say, oh, how much trouble do we, how much can we do to, until we get into too much trouble? There's probably going to be a new trend about the gay people. Because I've seen what happened with certain people. They say, oh, well, it's not okay to be gay, but when they learn, when they learn, they can do whatever they want because the law's on their side, that's when the horrible things happen. So, my last point is, if you get rid of the internet on them, they will get further into their own abominations. And then, bad things will happen. Not to themselves, but to the other person, because the law is on their side. It's as if no one cares about anyone anymore and they just assume that the ones that are, you know, not they're part of their agenda being gay and evil, that they're the enemies and that they're terrorists and that they're the evil ones. Backwards world, like good is evil and evil is good. There's nothing I can do about this, okay? Nothing. <sighs> this world is going to be destroyed by God. Completely destroyed by God. Sin is going to be... There's, sin is going to be taken out of this world, out of the agenda, about out of the equation and all that. There's going to be no more sin. All sin is... You know, all sin is going to be destroyed. This world's going to be whole pile of wreckage and people that see the wreckage are going to wonder what's going on back then that made it so special but they that they would say oh that's that's not what we want and when Satan comes back he'll give them the wonders of what he wishes for many people are going to follow him the whole world actually but some are going to be re remain faithful because they're the ones that have been taught about what happened happens when sin comes to them. When sin comes, those that stay perfect will stay perfect. And the ones that don't stay perfect, they're going to be judged like everyone else. Because once the Holy Spirit gets um, taken away from the world, there's no more Holy Spirit left. That means no one's going to be saved anymore unless they reject the mark of the beast, which is bowing down to worship Satan. And also, that's another thing that they reject is getting the mark on their forehead, uh, their forehead and on their right hand. Whatever that mark is, maybe it just is a dedication to Satan and whatever his name is, which may, which may be changing now or something like that. And another thing that is a dedication to Satan is to love that statue, that 66 foot statue, six stories high and six inches. Oh boy. Do you understand what's going on? This world is so evil that no one, I mean no one cares anymore about you. And this environment is getting so toxic that anyone going against them, it's like 
let me just get my last point here, I hope. Everyone that is like a Pharisee or a narcissist or toxic, they become more toxic and they want to see that you suffer even more. And they want everyone to be lower than them, even though they're racing towards that number one goal, but that number one goal is heaven, and they're not getting it. Only those that get it are the ones that are humble. Those are the ones that inherit the earth. You see? No narcissists are none of them are going to get that number one gold in her in the earth because they're proud. Do you see that? And what's the, what does it mean to be humble? To be under everyone else. Under God. Under everyone else. And hopefully you'll understand that if you think, if you think that you're above everyone else, you'll be lying to yourself. Because we up above all humans, again, humility means you follow orders. Humility means you have faith for God. That your faith is going towards God to do all of his orders, all, of, all the good orders that he tells you to do. To preach whoever needs to be preached to, and to basically help whoever he directs you to help. Also, Jesus is there for you, no matter what. So if anything, if you've been hurt, raped, or anything like that, go to Jesus. Go to Jesus for answers and all that. To tell, He will tell you exactly what to tell the court orders or anything like that, because no one's going for you anymore. If, if, if you've been molested by anyone that is, you know, claims to be gay or maybe transgender or anything like that don't go against the court instead use God as your guide and if they still arrest you well at least you didn't pry but you did present your case there's nothing else I can say about that because God's the only one that can guide your life into beauty of heaven he's the only one that can guide your life into a better living situation because even if your life is deserted and disastrous on earth it is no longer disaster in the afterlife in the times of the end or anything like that because remember eternal life is you know forever and that means eternally not separated from God but eternally, I mean eternally, accepted into, into salvation forever. And that means eternally love the God and accepted in paradise. And you're wondering, how do I get into paradise? If you're wondering, if you're humble enough. It's by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But how do you do that? The main thing is believe that Jesus took away all of your sins. Remember, you're a sinner. So the A is admit that you're a sinner. Tell Jesus that you're a sinner. And call upon the Lord Jesus to have mercy on you for, for your sinner. And that you accept him in, into your... Um, that you accept him as your Lord and Savior. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're pretty much set. Just do what God tells you to do, and you'll get your reward. Humility is really the number one thing. If you do what God tells you to do, in that kind of humility, then you'll definitely get that reward. Remember, it's not what, what you've done, but what God tells you to do. Alright, I'll be now, okay?